Now, we're about 50 miles west of Nashville, Tennessee, and we've just turned north off of Interstate 40 onto Highway 13. We're on our way to visit the Loretta Lynn Ranch, located at Hurricane Mills, Tennessee. Loretta Webb was born on the 14th of April, 1932. She was the second of eight children born to Theodore Melvin Webb. His friends called him Ted. And Clara Marie Ramey. She is called Clary. The Webb family lived in Butcher Holler, a local coal mining community close to Paintsville, Kentucky. Now, this is a picture of the house in Butcher Holler where Loretta was raised. She had a replica of the house built on her ranch at Hurricane Mills. Now, keep in mind, in eastern Kentucky in the 1930s, this was typically the way most people lived. Her dad was a coal miner. Although it was hard work and dangerous, it was considered a fairly good job. When Loretta was 15 years old, she met Oliver Lynn. Some people called him Doolittle, others called him Mooney. Now, although Doolittle, or Do as Loretta sometimes called him, was six years older than her, a romance developed between the two. In January of 1948, Doolittle and Loretta were married. On November, their first child, Betty Sue, was born. The next year in 1949, Doolittle became restless and moved his young family west to Custer, Washington. Loretta was already pregnant with her second child, Jack Benny Lynn, born 7 December 1949. Although Custer, Washington was a logging community, it was hard for Doolittle to make a living, and times for the Lynns were hard. In 1951, April the 12th, Loretta's third child, Ernest Ray, was born. And the next April, 1952, her fourth child, Clara Marie, Sissy, was born. In 1953, Doolittle bought Loretta a $17 guitar. Now, he knew that she could sing, and he thought that she sung just as good as any woman on the radio. So he became determined to see that she got her change. Loretta practiced with her $17 guitar for two or three years and finally formed a small band that her brother Jay Lee served as band leader and also the lead guitarist. Loretta and the Trailblazers is what they call themselves. Played in a lot of places. One of the places was the Delta Grange Hall in Custer, where they lived, and Bill's Tavern in Blair, Washington. Now, on February the 23rd, 1959, Loretta's heart was broken, really for the first time, when her dad, Ted Webb, suffered a stroke and passed away. Mr. Webb is buried in the Webb Butcher Cemetery in Van Leer, Kentucky. He was 52 years old. Not long after Mr. Webb's death, Loretta entered a television talent contest in Tacoma, Washington. She was spotted by producer Norm Burley of Zero Records. Soon Loretta was recording what would become her first of many hit records, Honky Tonk Girl. Now that the record was made, it was up to her and Doolittle to promote it. This meant mailing out demos to every radio station they could find and traveling across country and personally persuading or trying to persuade DJs to play her record, the record of an unknown artist, which was hard to do. They had little money and a lot of hope. They succeeded. Honky Tonk Girl made it into the top 20 chart. In 1960 was a big year for the young star. For one, they moved to Nashville and signed a contract with Decca Records. 
Loretta met and become close friends with singing star Patsy Cline. She also that year went on tour with Teddy and Doyle, the Wilburn brothers. And in 1962, on September the 25th, she joined the Grand Ole Opry and is still a member. The next year in 1963, Loretta was heartbroken again when she learned that her close friend, Patsy Klein, was killed in a plane crash. While still trying to get over Patsy's death, her twins were born, Peggy and Patsy, on August the 6th, 1964. And three years later, in 1967, Loretta wins Vocalist of the Year Award. She and her sister Peggy Sue Webb wrote the hit song, Don't Come Home a Drinking. Around this time, Loretta and Doolittle were looking for a bigger place outside of Nashville to accommodate their large family. While driving around some 50 miles west of Nashville, they made a few wrong turns and they came upon this old plantation home. Now, no one had lived here for over 30 years and it was in disrepair. Nevertheless, Loretta loved it and had to have it. They weren't even sure that it was for sale. But when they bought this home, they could not imagine at that time that they would one day own over 5,000 acres, plus restore the old mill and buy what was left of Hurricane Mill, the little town. The little town that was directly across the Duck River from their home. During the next 22 years that the Lynn family lived in this home, Loretta would win award after award. Some would Conway Twitty as the best singing duo in country music. In 1980, the Academy Award winning movie Coal Miner's Daughter was released. It starred Sissy Spacek and Tommy Lee Jones. The movie was filmed here using Loretta and Doolittle's home. Over the years, Loretta was finding out more and more about the house she was living in. For one thing, she found out that there had been a Civil War skirmish on the ranch and 16 Confederate soldiers are buried on the ranch grounds. Also, thinking that this was a cellar door on her porch to store canned food and then learning it was a pit to chain up unruly slaves. In 1981, Loretta's mother Clara dies. She died on the November the 24th and she's buried next to her husband, Loretta's dead in Kentucky. The beautiful Duck River that flows in front of the plantation home brought more tragedy to the queen of country music. In 1984, Jack Benny, Loretta and Doolittle's second child, was drowned while trying to cross the Duck River by horseback. Jack is buried in the Lynn Family Estate Cemetery on the family ranch. Jack was 34 years old. 
Now, someone had said that Jack was a lot like Doolittle, and that might have been one of the reasons they said that he was loved so much. A mother does not love one child more than another. It might seem that way, but a mother knows which child needs more attention. When birds leave the nest and there's one that can't fly well, not as well as the rest, or maybe can't fly at all, the crippled bird will receive more attention, no matter which one it is. It's simply because they need it, and Mother knows. Through the years, Loretta Lynn has more hit records and albums than I can possibly talk about. And in 1988, she was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. In the mid-90s, it was discovered that Loretta's husband, Doolittle, had heart trouble along with diabetes. She cut down on her personal appearances and halted plans to expand in Branson in order to stay home and take care of Do. On August the 22nd, 1996, Loretta Lynn's husband, Oliver Doolittle Mooney Lynn, dies of heart disease. He was buried in the family cemetery next to his son, Jack. Doolittle was 69 years old. Loretta once again was heartbroken. She not only lost her husband of almost 50 years, but lost the closest person that was with her in the beginning. And after Mooney's death, it was a couple of years before she could gain enough to function and think of music. She went back on the road singing with her daughters and sometimes with her famous sisters. In 2013, Loretta's oldest child, Betty Sue Lynn, dies on July the 29th from acute emphysema. Her emphysema had been worsened by fumes that she had breathed from a cleaning solution while trying to clean up after a flood. Betty Sue is buried with her brother and her dad in the family cemetery. She was 64 years old. Loretta now lives in a large house behind the plantation home that she has turned into a museum. Now, if you see this bus pass with a picture of a coal miner, take off your hat. Not for the songs that she sang, but for the life that she lived. 